Unforgivable 911 dispatcher errors. <clears throat> this one's going to be interesting. Because dispatchers, I've heard like a lot of uh, really fucked up shit before. So, yeah, this was in true crime. I just didn't get to watch it. It's over, and we are thankful because this has been an absolute nightmare for us. As my statement said, we're sentenced to life. <clears throat> and I think any parent that's had this happen to them will tell you the same thing. You are sentenced to life. A mother and daughter's desperate pleas fall on deaf ears. A dispatcher hangs up on a man who had just found his mother dead, while another faces disciplinary action after failing to help a frantic mother of a 10-month-old baby who locked himself in the car. Just after midday on April 2nd, 2008, 21-year-old Brittany Zimmerman made a panicked call to 911. It ended abruptly, and although there were audible sounds of distress, the dispatcher failed to call back. Less than an hour later, her fiancé, Jordan Gonnering, found the apartment door kicked open and the lock broken. On the bedroom floor, Brittany lay unresponsive. 911, what's the address of the emergency? 911, what's the address of the emergency? Hello? This Hello? is 911, what's the yeah. address of the emergency? Repeat it. Is there an apartment number? The flat. It's what? You're cutting out. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Okay, you're Dude, why is she so pissed off already? Hello? Hello? What's your address? Hello? 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 I know you're- I know you're dying right now. Like, okay, I get it. As a dispatcher, you probably deal with some dumb fucking people, right? I would say 95% of the time, you deal with some dumb fucking people, right? However, there's that 5% of people who are in danger, who could die, all right? And it's also your fucking job. I'm cutting out. Did you say upper or lower flat? Yes. Which? It's the lower flat, apartment one. Okay. Ambulance is needed. Okay, what's the phone number you're calling from, please? Okay, what is your name? Jordan Garring. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. I just came home, the door was busted in, and my girlfriend's been shot. Okay. Stay on the phone with me. Okay? Yep. Are you with her right now? Yes, I am. How old is she? She is 19, no, she's 21. 21? Is she conscious? No, she's not. Okay, stay on the phone, okay? Are you safe where you are right now? I think so. Okay, wait, it's going good. What, what happens? Okay. Is the person that did this still nearby? Is there any serious bleeding? She's been what? Okay, we're, I'm sending an ambulance to help you. I want you to stay on the line with me so I can okay. tell you what to do next, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, stay on the phone with me so I can uh, tell you how to help her, okay? I want you to get as close to the phone, to the phone, uh, with the, to her with the phone as you can, okay? Yes, yes. Okay, and then are you, you're right by her now? Yes. All right, I want you to lay her flat on her back on the ground. Yep. Remove any pillows. Okay. Okay. I need you to kneel next to her and her mouth, look at her mouth for any food or vomit. Is no, there anything? Just, is there any? I need. Okay. Did you think she did this herself? No, she couldn't have. She couldn't have done it herself. No, no, it's a gunshot wound. Hold on. You're inside maybe, with her? You're inside maybe. with Okay, can you feel or hear any breathing at all? Okay. Okay, just so you know, there's there's an ambulance on the way and the officers are on the way as well, okay? Okay, okay. And I'm also talking to them as, at the same time as, that... Okay, are, is that you standing in the window? Yes, yes. Okay, I want you to come out right now. Oh, yep. So they... Wait, I'm confused. What What's bad so far? This hasn't been bad. You can get happened. in there to help her, okay? Yep. <clears throat> okay. All right. She, she told me to hang out with the officer. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Officers arrived on the scene 48 minutes after the first 911 call. Brittany was dead, her body covered with injuries, including stab wounds to her chest, Wait, strangulation what? marks on her neck. It was an earlier call that was disregarded, I'm assuming? I think she called and they hung up then after he called.
Oh, Brittany originally called. Oh! Oh, but they didn't show that call. And signs of blood force trauma. I was confused. Although detectives started the investigation. Yeah, that's crazy. 48 minutes? ...that day. It would take <clears throat> over a decade before justice would be served. Of course, that's how After the justice After conducting several worked. interviews with neighbors, police believed a man, later identified as David Call, was their suspect. But a lack of concrete forensic evidence kept them from pressing charges. Of course! The 38-year-old lived about a mile from the crime scene and had been ringing doorbells and asking for money that day. When he was taken in for questioning, Call admitted to this, saying he was high. Additionally, Call told investigators that he was a paranoid schizophrenic who had stopped taking his medication, but he denied entering any homes or having any part in the murder. Dude, that's like the biggest fuck. Oh my god, dude, he's gonna get away with it, isn't he? At the time, Call was on supervised release following convictions for failure to update his status in the sex offender registry as well as driving while under the influence. Just two of the many convictions against him. And the repeat offender would find himself back in prison nearly two months after Brittany was killed. But Detectives not, questioned but not Call because numerous of times over the following years. And while incarcerated in 2009, he sent a letter to police claiming that another inmate had committed the murder. In November 2010, Brittany's mother, Jean Zimmerman, spoke to NBC 15 in the hopes of increasing the reward money for finding her killer. I cannot even imagine that I'm going to have to live the rest of my life. Dude, imagine being that 911 dispatcher, though. Imagine. Without her. It is very difficult to get out of bed every day and function. And um, every day that goes by, it, it gets harder. It does not get easier. I fear that, yes, tomorrow could be a day, Tuesday could be a day that someone else died. Between 2010 and 2017, David Call would be in and out of prison. He should be fired? During this time, I wonder he if they did get fired. told inmate, Andrew Scholes, that he feared being charged in Brittany's death due to incriminating fingerprints he claimed he left behind on her neck. Skulls had made an arrangement with the what? authorities in exchange for information, but then he died in a motorbike accident. What? Then crucial DNA test results matched the evidence left behind on Brittany's clothing to David Call. By this point, testing had advanced. It seemed like a break in the case. In reality, during a March 2018 interview, Kevin and Jean Zimmerman were still waiting for any answers or progress in the case. Chief Koval came to our door on my husband's birthday and said, we believe we have the person responsible for killing your daughter. When the media questioned Madison Police Chief Mike Koval, that he said the sole therapy? detective on the yeah. case had broken down and they had to create a team to carry on working to find Brittany's killer. However, it didn't seem like an arrest was on the horizon. If I had the probable cause based on the totality of the evidence I had, don't you think I would have made an arrest? As a result of active leads, the investigation would not be classified Doesn't as a cold case, which stopped the Zimmerman family from being able to access the files and conduct their own investigation. It also gave a sense of hope that naming a suspect was imminent, but it would be another two years before David Call was arrested. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. At the same time, Brittany's family was in the midst of a lawsuit over the 911 call. Dispatcher Rita Gahagan, a veteran operator, had heard voices and background noise but didn't recognize a scream in the recording, resulting in the call being dropped without perceiving any distress. She did not call back, but instead returned a second call, which she logged as a misdial. Even this would be a contentious point since initial reports said the dispatcher had forgotten to call back. Wow. Gahagan defended herself, <clears throat> adamant she had only dropped the call after failing to hear anything suggestive of an emergency. Ultimately, the Zimmerman family reached a $5,000 settlement with Dane County. That's it? And the funds were redirected to Brittany's reward fund during the investigation. Several judges have rejected That's requests it. for the call to be made public. In fact, Media outlets also engaged in a legal battle with Dane County over the records. 
particularly withholding the 911 calls. All right. Shut up. A settlement of $118,000 <clears throat> was reached and still the recordings of the call made Oh, okay, rip. that's a lot better. 118,000. However, lawyers for the media were allowed to listen to it. And those who have heard it say there is no question about screaming in the audio. Finally, after 12 years of waiting, David Call was arrested on March 20th, 2020. 2020? His version of events was Jesus. even more heartbreaking than imagined. Brittany had let the 38-year-old in as an act of kindness. She had refused to give Call money but let him use the bathroom. When he came out, she was on the phone. It's unclear whether this... Okay, I'm sorry. Why? Like, no offense to her, like, being a good Samaritan at all, but, but don't. Like, chat, never do that. Never do that, chat. Okay? Like, PSA, don't, don't do that. This was the 911 call that dispatchers ignored. According to his attorney, the man panicked, grabbed the phone, and tried to strangle Brittany with her shirt. The attack didn't stop there. After the killer noticed the 21-year-old was still breathing, he grabbed a knife from the butcher's block in the kitchen and stabbed oh. her 19 times. Oh! On January 20th, 2023, David Call eventually pleaded guilty to first-degree homicide and was sentenced to mandatory life in prison. It was much more about him letting go of a secret and making sure that he provided closure to all of the people who have spent a lot of time and energy and emotion. I could never live my last days not knowing who did this to her. What he did was unspeakable. And to not have the person responsible for that behind bars, it, it was unacceptable to us. He decided to forego the opportunity to be considered for parole after serving 20 years, saying that the Zimmerman family had suffered enough. He had taken a life from them so he would give up his. Okay, that's that's that is weird. That that's honestly weird for someone to do that. Like for a criminal to be like, no, just give me life. Don't even give me parole. Like just Wow. That's fucked up, dude. <clears throat> Despite 26 documented calls to the police spanning over months, two British women were left stranded by those who were meant to protect them. 22-year-old Renim Uday spoke to police five times in less than two hours, desperately needing intervention from the man who had been abusing her for years. Oh, in no. fact, she had court orders against him and witnesses to corroborate one of the attacks. But the call was flagged as a lower risk. A lower risk? Hi. Um, actually, I called now the whole time to ask about the police. I'm waiting for them to come to my property regarding my ex-partner. He came. Okay, whenever in life. Shut up, bitch! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Fuck you. Whenever in life has a domestic call been deemed a low uh a low priority? <clears throat> like, dude, domestic calls are like like the amount of murders that come from that shit. And then he hit me and he, he actually harmed me and my mom as well. So um, I waited so long and I'm, I'm waiting in the car. So Did you is call it on this mobile? Yeah. Do you know the log number? Yeah. Can you give me a second? Can you give me a second, please? The log number? Bro, she could, she could literally be like dying soon. Oh, do you have the log number? What? Yeah, it's uh, 26. Yeah. 8626 six again, and then 0818. And what's your name? Raneem Oda. No, you didn't call okay. on this number. You called on a different number. No one called me. I haven't received any calls. No. When you called the police, you didn't call yeah. on this mobile that you're calling on now. No, no, no. I no, called for I asked you. And you. I asked you if you called on the mobile that you're calling on now. You said. You Why does that matter? Why? Why does it matter what phone she's calling on? No, I called three times. So once I called from different number and right. twice I called from my number. 
Okay, well, we went to the location, um, but obviously you left and went home, so we're going to have to wait until there's another offer to free. Um, can can you actually just keep it for tomorrow? Because I don't have uh, the keys for the property, and I'm just waiting in the street from two hours now. So I'm just going to leave it to tomorrow, and please, like, you know, you should do something about it. He should be arrested because... This is, I have non manifestation order against him. He can't even come by ne- near by me. So he came and he actually beat me and beat my mom up in front of everyone. There is witness, there is many things. So he actually should be arrested without even the police come and see me. Right, okay, so where are you now? Are I'm, you just going, I'm just going back to my mom now. What, yeah, I'm just dress? going back. I just want you guys, please, to arrest him because... Yeah, I, I understand that. What's your mom's address? Yeah. And you go in there because you haven't got a key for your house? I've I been to my house. Yeah. I don't have the keys and I waited for long. So I'm going back to my mom now. I can't just stay in the street. Dispatcher, this sounds it's really rude. Late yeah. And I'm worried you might come to my property and hurt me again with something wrong. Right, okay. And you want to see officers tomorrow? Right? Uh, sorry? You want to see officers tomorrow instead? Yeah, yeah. But please, today he should be arrested. So, yeah, like, so she's called three different times. And apparently officers haven't been out there. And so she literally is nice enough to be like, can you just send one tomorrow then? I can't. I can't just like, you know, I have a baby with me. I have two and a half year old, year, year old child. He might hurt me or hurt the child. So it's just really dangerous. He's drunk as well. And he might just get a knife or something and do something to us. Okay. All right, we'll go back and to I- your mum's. If he turns up there, call 999, Okay. Okay, and are you going to do action against him, actually, or no? I believe we'll co- need to come and see you first. Okay, so we'll, you we'll have to see me first. We'll leave it with yeah, but we'll, we'll try and get out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Dude, you're not setting up a dentist appointment, bro. Like, you're, you're not calling your doctor to try to fit in your schedule. Oh, oh, what? He might come over and stab you with a knife and he already beat you and your mom? Oh, yeah. That doesn't really fit in my schedule. Uh, are you free tomorrow? Tomorrow around like around two? Will you be alive around that time? Like what? <laughs> the f- is, is, it, is this how it works? Is this how it works to, to call 911? Hey, I just got beat. Me and my mom just got beat by my husband. Can you send someone over? Ooh, we're pretty busy right now. Uh, it's going to take a while. I mean, I could fit you in a slot like next week if that works out for you. So you're going to leave him like this till tomorrow? Well, it's down to the local station, what they want to do. Local station. So you need if to I... go to your mum's and lock the door. Yeah. And then yeah. if he turns up, call 999, okay? We'll get someone that's to see you that's the problem when I'm calling. They're not coming quickly. I've been waiting two hours now. Yeah, because he had left, so the risk has been lowered. That's the issue. But now, now he's not there. He, he might be waiting. To, well, now he might he's be not waiting. there. So we have he to might do be another waiting. job where there yeah. are people there still. That's how it yeah. works. So you just yeah, but he... to your mums and lock the door, yeah. and we'll try and see you tomorrow. Okay. okay. Just lock the door, forehead. I right, guys. I know plenty of criminals that uh, that a locked door, they walk up to it and they go, ah, man, a locked door. Well, now I can't murder anyone. Huh. Darn. Goes on their merry way. That's what all murderers do, man. They, yeah, they even knock on the door first. Knock, knock. Hello? Oh, yeah, I'm here to murder you. Oh, you don't want me in? And it's locked. Oh, well, I, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully you don't call the cops and schedule an, an appointment to be here tomorrow because that's when I'll be here. Like, what is this shit, man? Okay, but no, he's, he, he, he actually followed me from my mom to the place where I was in the restaurant. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. It's... That, it's been two hours He's now, waiting though. for me. It's been yeah, two okay. hours, so you need to go to... Okay, that's what you said you okay. wanted to do. All okay. right, thank you. Bye-bye. Eventually, the department called her back. Wow. Hello there, it's the police at uh, Sally Hall here. Just to let you know, um, I've arranged um, an appointment tomorrow. Now, the officers come on duty at 8 o'clock in the morning, and in the morning, when they have a look through this incident, they will give you a call and arrange your time to come and see you. 
at some point tomorrow in the morning. You don't have any officers on duty? What do you mean they don't start until 8 in the morning? What if what if a murder happens at 2 in the morning? What? Cops is like, oh, oh, a murder. Ha um, oh, there's a shootout going on and it's 2 in the morning. Um, Yeah, you're going to have to wait till 8 in the morning. I don't think I could do that. What? All right. A smaller town cops do that here too. That no, that's not that's not how it works. It doesn't matter if it's a small town. I lived in a, I've lived in a town with like two thousand people in it. Like no, cops are there is always someone on the clock. That's how it fucking works. That's what a cop is. They are there for emergencies. They're not there for an eight to five desk job. Okay, so eight o'clock they have to see me or just go there? No, no, no. They 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 start work at eight o'clock in the morning. They will have a look at the incident that you've reported, and they will make okay. contact with you to arrange a suitable time. Okay. Yes. Okay. So they will make contact with you in the morning. Okay. There is a witness as well. There is a witness as well. If you want, okay. we'll take all those details from you tomorrow. <laughs> Do you okay. have a copy of the order? Oh, there's a shootout? Yeah, you mean the number? Mm, yeah, let's wait till tomorrow. Or the uh, non-molestation order? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I do have, I do have, Okay, yeah. that's great. All right, so somebody will be in touch with you tomorrow then, okay? Uh, yeah, love, uh, I just want to ask you, you will be arrested tomorrow or not? It was too late. While Renine was on the oh, phone it was phone too late. To police, really? John Boz Taran repeatedly stabbed the 22-year-old and her mother. Kawala Salim to death. Wow. On top of this, in the weeks leading up to the murders, there had been seven separate police callouts to John Baz's home, and Renim had made 14 calls to report domestic abuse incidents. Jesus Christ, Still, and they did nothing? Officers failed to arrest or investigate the men before the tragedy. Wow. The couple met in college, but Renim was still married to a man in Syria. However, Despite her best efforts, the relationship fell apart. Once Renim was single, John Boz started pursuing her more. Eventually, they started dating. Just months later, the couple was married under Islamic law. Her aunt, Noor Norris, was concerned about what John Boz had said on the wedding day. Today you are mine, and in my culture, there's no divorce. The day you leave me. That's scary. The day you go to your grave. I will kill you and your family. But the what? marriage fell apart when Renee. Yo, he said that on their wedding night? Dude. What? Huh? Shit, maybe I should have said that to Amy. Our wedding day. Like, what? what is that? You are mine now. There is no divorce. The day you leave me is the day you die. What the fuck? Is that supposed to be romantic? <clears throat> Neem discovered that her husband had a secret wife and three children in Afghanistan. She feared how he would react when she confronted him. And so, so she can't leave you or you'll kill her but you're allowed to have a secret family and you know i think that's fair that's fair recorded it on her phone it's not easy to find out everything and you want me to smile at you i mean the high one so if i you find that. out now i'm cheating on you would you smile at me after two minutes i did i'm not cheating on you i went to my wife yeah she's my wife yeah yes i'm not cheating on you Oh, that's not cheating. So you made her pregnant. That's not cheating. No, but she's my wife. Really? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Going to your wife and making her pregnant. That's that's actually finished everything. I wouldn't just get divorced from you, get separate. You really you really need to deal with it. Yeah. Who's divorce? Renee moved back to her mother's house for a short while. Jesus. But John Buzz manipulated her to get back together with him. Things only worsened, so she secretly recorded evidence of his violent outbursts to protect herself and her son. I Did you learn know. nothing from the pickup artist video pick? Yeah, good point. Good point. Please, you know, I can tell them. I can tell them every single thing. How many times you beat me up? 
Mm -hmm. uh, they will take you to jail straight away. I can call them, tell them many things about you, Jean. Yeah. yeah? So I'm not yeah. doing anything. Yeah. If there is even a space yeah. for you, there is no more. Neighbors began documenting the arguments between the couple too. There was one occasion where the neighbors actually got involved and chased him out of the building. Again, wow. Remy moved to her mother's house and took out a court order against John Boss, but he continued to harass and threaten her for four months, even sleeping outside the house for nearly two weeks. Ugh. By August 26, 2018, oh, it all came to a head. <clears throat> Renim and Kawala were seen arguing with John Boz in a shisha lounge in Birmingham. He slapped both women in the face and angrily snatched a phone from Renim before staff escorted him out. After being kicked Jesus. out, the 21-year-old was seen driving past So you're telling me after in front of an entire restaurant, he smacks two women in the face, takes her phone. Nah, that's, that's not worth going out there. Eh, I, don't, I don't think that's worth cops going out to check that. You making a throat slitting gesture towards <sighs> the women. Just hours later, the mother and daughter were killed. Once he had committed the brutal murders, John Buzz fled the scene and shaved off his beard to disguise himself. Before wow, what a genius. He was seen on CCTV in a chicken shop. A major manhunt was launched, with the killer's face appearing across the news. Finally, three days later, someone recognized John Buzz from the media appeal and he was arrested by officers. Family members of the victims held the police accountable for not preventing the tragic death. Yeah, that could have easily this been claim prevented. This was later substantiated by an inquest that scrutinized the actions of the... Actually, you know what? No. It wouldn't have. He would have killed her anyway, because what would happen is, you know, he'd get in, like, a, a domestic issue. He'd get taken away for a little bit. The cops will give him a slap on the wrist, you know, maybe give him a little bit of a charge, let him go free... And then he'd kill them. So technically, it doesn't matter what happens here. Because even if the cops went out there and, like, stopped him and took him in for a little bit, he's just going to go right back out there and kill him anyway. You know? Like, it wouldn't matter. Authorities in handling the situation. The evidence, which included multiple calls to the police and court documents unequivocally pointed to the West Midlands police failures in protecting Ranim and Kaula. These lapses, as determined by the inquest, were significant contributing factors to the tragic outcome. Further reinforcing this, an investigation by the Independent Office for Police Conduct identified missed opportunities, demonstrating that the authorities could have intervened effectively to prevent the murders. In December 2018, John Buzz Tarrin pleaded guilty to the two murders and was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 32 years. You sh uh, wait, hold up, my brain. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me, let me read, let me read words. This is why you stay forever alone besides friends? True. This dispatcher Her hung up so on a cool. man who had just found his mother dead. 911 emergency. Oh my god, I can't think. I need a medical on the line. Don't hang up the line. Oh, One please, minute. Please. He's saying that he his mom's passed away. I don't have that. Yeah, please. Oh. Please. Okay. Oh. Ma'am. Ma'am. I'm a guy. Stop. Okay, then. Stop acting ballistic, bro. His mom died. Can you just calm down for a second? You're telling someone whose mom died to chill. I need a building number. Okay. Is she breathing at all? Okay, you don't have to holler at me. I didn't do it. Okay? What? Huh? What is that? What? Why even say that? What? I didn't do it.
Ew, what the fuck? Bye. Okay, listen, we have the call. Medical and officers are going to be responding. Was she sick? What happened? Man, I don't know. I just got off work. I just worked like 12 hours today. Man, my mom. Hanging up on someone who has called 911 for help seriously violates how the emergency service operates. Dude, honestly, like, him saying fuck you, bitch, deserved. Deserved, to be honest. But the dispatcher <clears throat> kept her job. Of the course The original call taker from the Metro Police Department remained on the line. An internal investigation by Las Vegas Fire and Rescue found that the female employee- Like, dude, you're a goddamn dispatcher. Like, how are you not trained or at least under, uh, like, have empathy for people who are, like, just witnessed someone dead? Like, this dude's mom just died. And you're over here saying, I, I didn't do it. You don't have to be so mean to me. I didn't do anything. Stop yelling at me, bro. His mom just fucking died, dude. But he made critical failures, but would not be fired. She faced corrective action, but what that actually means remains unclear. But following the dude, corrective action is just telling her, hey, don't do that again. January 2014 call. The department said it was moving forward with plans for a new quality assurance position. Oh, God, this has to do with the kid. Oh, no. Meanwhile, this frantic mother's call also led to a 911 Tampa know. dispatcher facing disciplinary like action. After leaving a Tampa supermarket, Shayna Dees placed her son Jack inside his car seat, shut the door, and returned the shopping cart. In that short time, Jack, who had the keys to play with, locked the not yet running car, which also held Shayna's purse and phone. Luckily, she found a stranger in the parking lot who let her borrow a phone to call 911, but the dispatcher wasn't very helpful. You're joking. Taylor Police, 911. You're joking, dude. Hi, um, my infant son is locked in the car in the parking lot. He had the keys and hit the lock button when I was loading groceries in. And it's so hot outside. I'm really, I'm concerned. I, like, I don't think I have time to call AAA before he would, you know, suffer heat exhaustion. Can somebody come out and open the door or I, I don't even know if that's something you guys do they won't be able to to, to try to get gain access to the car unless the child is in some kind of distress distress he's locked in a car when it's hot and it's an infant that's pretty, that's a lot of distress. And, and but by that point, they may just smash your windows. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. Not much a child in distress. I'm sorry, I'm a child. Roughly eight minutes after the call ended, an off-duty police officer took notice and called 911, getting a different operator who immediately asked where they were. 911, what is your emergency? Hey, how you doing? Um, is this Tampa PD? Yeah, this is 911. What's your emergency? How you doing? Okay. Um, baby locked in a car. Okay, where they at? Oh, yeah. Okay, is that a house or a residence? Yeah, that. That's how you fucking do it, man. That's how you fucking do it. Baby locked in car. Okay, where is he? That's it. Uh, sorry. Uh, your baby's not in enough distress. I need I need to hear the screams and cries of your child being in pain before we could send someone. Business or a business or a CVS pharmacy. Uh, <laughs> All right. How old is the child? Uh, it's in a car seat, baby. A baby. Okay. What kind of car is it? It's a black Acura. You know what year? Don't know. Is the person there who owns the car? Yes. Okay. Could you find out from her, please? She's a little distraught. You want her license plate number? Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, All right, great. Thank you so much. Is the vehicle running or no? No, it's turned off. Okay, turned off. All right, what's your name? Hi. Oh, okay. Oh. Hey, how you doing? Okay. She she said she called number one and they said they're not going to come out if the baby's not in distress. No, that's not true. Not at all. Yeah, okay. Not at all. We'll be out there for her, okay? Yeah, what the fuck, okay. man? All right. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Break the window? Like, what's more important, a window or your child? Yeah, dude, that's what I'd do. Like, I'd just find a fucking rock and just 
like I just start slamming. I'd be like that one meme you see of the dude just just punching the fucking glass. At that time of year, the average afternoon temperature hovers in the high 80s to low 90s. Of course, that rises considerably in a car that isn't Thank God the baby no didn't die, down. dude. I, that, I was so scared in that the was going to happen. Another shopper broke the passenger side window <clears> of the wrench before police arrived. Tampa police conceded that the dispatcher should have been more aggressive and asked for location, but said that the operator did not refuse to send an officer and that the mother ended the call. The dispatcher was disciplined for Yeah, the because the mother didn't know. She literally said, I mean, I don't even know if you guys do that. Incident. For more true 911 calls, watch this episode. God, that's so fucked up, dude. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribe? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.